here again in the Sunroom Studio from AllAboutStencils.com and DesignsFromPenny.com. Today we're working on a Trump Loy keyboard. And this is free at AllAboutStencils.com and DesignsFromPenny.com. And the reason that we're doing this is I want to introduce you to the joy of having these little trick paintings around your house. This one goes on a door and it's going to look like an old-fashioned keyhole. Um, so let me show you what I have right now. I want to step you through the stencil. This is a two-layer stencil, so I want to show you how that's going to work, and then we'll get to painting. Okay, one second. This is what I printed from the website. Um, and again, it's going to be a two-layer stencil, so I printed it twice. And let me show you how that works. Now, first of all, when I first got my clear prints, and this is actually the first layer, so let's start with that. When I got my clear prints before I cut anything out, I covered it with a clear coating. Uh, this one I use clear shelf liner. Uh, it works great to preserve your stencil so you can use them again and again. This is our first layer of the Kibo. As you notice, it's just the oval. I cut out just the oval and the four triangles in the corners. These are our um, kind of our regulation holes. We're going to line up, we're going to put this stencil, mark our corners, and then when we remove that, we'll be able to line up the second layer with that. And I'll show you as we go. This is the keyhole. So you see we have two layers, and we're going to start with this one. So let's get painting. I'm back again, and this is the door we're going to be working on. Um, I actually have my first layer stencil in place. And I want to show you what I did here. Um, I taped across the top when I got it in place where I wanted it. Now also, remember with the paper stencil, you can cut them down if you want. That's the beauty of paper stencils again. But I didn't do that because mine has enough room that I can curve it around. Okay. Now remember we have our registration marks where we're going to line the second overlay up. Just a little tip. What I did, in case you don't want to mark on your surface, I put four little pieces of masking tape in the place where the triangles are so that I can mark on that. And when I'm finished, I can just gently pull that up. Anyway, that's one little trick that I use. I'm going to put this down in place. And I have another piece of tape here to secure the bottom. And now we're ready to paint. I'm going to show you what I'm using here. I used a little dab of antique gold and I used a little dab of Inca gold. Uh, the antique gold has an aged look. And the Inca gold, I think, is going to give us a little bit of a shine. I'm using this foam brush. I find that work pretty good. Very inexpensive. And I dab in each one and then I touch it off like that. A dry, dry brush. But I got a little bit of each paint on, e on the pad. And there you go. And then you just start. I start at the corners. And always in up and down motion. Never back and forth because that's what's going to push paint underneath our stencil and smear our image. And again, back and forth. And that's it. This looks like this may take a couple of layers. Again, if you're painting on a layer that's already uh, on a surface that's already painted, paint may not accept it very well for a couple of layers and you want to get a darker color, the way to do that is more layers, not more paint. The more paint you use, the more it's going to smudge and smear. So always remember, very, very light, always up and down motion. Okay, well that gives you an idea of what we're doing with our first layer. We're going to let that dry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our second layer into place. And I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and put it here across the top. Okay, now what we're doing is we're going to line up the triangles with the triangles here. Okay, so we do that. Kind of got to hunt around a little bit. There's one, there's two, and three and four. So then I go ahead and Push down my tape. Let's see if I can get another piece here. Pull it up the bottom. Okay, 
Now we're ready to paint on our keyhole. I have here one little dab of black paint, my paintbrush, and again, dry brush technique. What I usually do is dab the paint right in there and then just brush it around on the palette. Just to get my paint paintbrush where it has very little paint on it. And start dabbing it on. Now, the gold may have taken a couple of layers. Black isn't going to take anything. Probably just this one layer will get us done because black is really good coverage. And that looks like that's going to be it. Easy enough. Now, a couple of other little things that I wanted to talk to you about is on a surface like this, you always want to make sure that your surface is prepared to be able to accept the paint. If what you're painting on has a glossy finish, you may need to rub it down with a light sandpaper before you start. And also, you always want to make sure that your surface is very, very clean before you paint on it. Okay, so our keyhole is there. We need to let this dry, and then I'm going to unveil it for you. Okay. Now you see I've removed the keyhole stencil and all we have left is a masking tape with the markers on them. And I'm just going to gently, gently peel those off. A stencil will get us to the point of having the image in place. Then it's our responsibility to bring a little more life to it. So what we want to do here is add some highlights or some shadows, whatever it is we want to do. And that's individual to the space that this is going to be. So I'm going to look at the shadows that are here. You see the doorknob, you see shadows are thrown off this way. So I'm going to put a little shadow on the left hand side of it. And then, well, let's talk about the shadow first. Very, very thin paint brushes. In fact, I have two of them here. One for the lighter colors and then darker colors. What I have here on the palette, if you can see, is black. And I have a little bit of color called Suede. It's a gray, it's a tan, uh, it's a good shadow color. So I'm going to use a little bit of that. I'm going to kind of run the black through there a little bit too. A little more of the Suede is what I want. Okay, until I get a color that's a pretty good shadow color. And that's for an off-white, or this is actually an antique white door. You'll need to work with whatever your color background is. This one, I'm just going to kind of run a thin line on this side of it. Kind of fade it out. I'm doing this quick just to show you how I'm doing. But take a little more time and get it just how it's going to work for you. I'll come back with just a little bit of black. Bit just to make a dark, dark shadow right along the edge, and use the the lines of the stencil as your guide. And that's it. I have a little shadow around there. And you can see the lights coming in this way. What I want to do is inside the keyhole. There are there's workings inside the keyhole. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to use a little bit of the gold actually. I'm going to come around there, right around the circle, and ever so slightly put a little bit of the gold. So that you can kind of see there's some light shining in there. There's just barely something in there. There you go. Okay, now we've finished, and here is the painting of our Trumploid Kibo. And um, as you see, it was kind of a quick project. We were able to get through it pretty easily. Uh, there's a lot more that you could do with it once you start working on it. Uh, there could be some highlights over the top, whatever you want to do with it. It was a lot of fun, and I hope you try it out. And come back to allaboutstencils.com and designsfrompenny.com for more projects. And as I always say, happy stenciling! Mm -hmm.